So I am in Dubuque, Iowa, and we're along the Mississippi River, and we just rolled up on, it's the Julian Dubuque Monument. So I wanted to do a little video about three apps that I'm currently using to not only take notes when I'm out shooting pictures, but follow them all the way into the dark room so that I have basically the whole process from loading the film in my holders all the way to my final darkroom print log. So this has been really cool. I've been searching for a workflow for quite some time and even have been considering making an, an actual app um, so I've been looking into that a little bit, but this workflow seems to be pretty good. So this is actually the first time I'm trying it out. So the three apps are the Viewfinder app, the, Re Re <laughs> the Viewfinder app, the Reciprocity Timer, and GoodNotes. So the first app that I'm using is, it's called Viewfinder. And what that does is on your actual phone, you can preview what the scene's gonna look like between, um, from your actual focal length um, lenses. But I'm pretty much looking for um, composition. But this was the only app that I could find that would actually make use of the wider angle lenses. So I had a different app, but you could only go down to like 105 millimeters or something. So this one I can actually use with my 90 millimeter lens. So I really like that. And so I'm kind of digging this composition. So I think I'm going to set up right about here. So that's the first one I'm going to use. Now this is the Reciprocity Failure app. And this has a really cool feature in it where you can actually take notes and put your zone placements on the picture. So um, I forgot to go back. So in Viewfinder, I'll actually take a picture of the composition that I'm trying to take. So if I go from this angle, and I take the picture, Now, and I usually, I'll do it in color, I'll do it in black and white. I usually don't, don't care too much. Uh, the black and white, I find it, it's a little bit deceiving, the, the film emulations. In the reciprocity failure, I have my frame selected with Kodak Tri-X, and I have my different filters in here as well. So I can add, I put my yellow-orange, it's the 12 deep yellow filter. So I'll add that. And then once I have my base exposure, so let's see, I'm gonna shoot at F32. So at F32, so we're gonna plug in a half second. And basically it's telling me there's no um, recipro reciprocity failure in that. But if I hit start, it's gonna bring me to this note section and that's where things get a little bit interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this picture and then we'll come back. All right, so let me show you this now. So I, those are both half second. I took a backup frame. Um, I usually do that with, with my holders. I'll take the same frame on the front and the back. That case, you know, in case something does happen um, to one of them, I always have the backup. So I'm gonna hit start and this is gonna be on, fr so I have my film holders labeled. This, so this is one and two and I have those in here, one and two. It shows the film that was in here. If I hit start, it's gonna open up this note and it's gonna show me, I was shooting with the 90 millimeter Nikkor lens, the film I was using, the exposure. Um, I'm gonna go up and put the f-stop 32. Uh, I gotta go into halves here. F32, normal development. And this was just an auto note created, which is pretty cool. So I don't really have to put anything in the comments on that, you know, you don't have to do anything unless you want to. But for this, this is where I find it really interesting. So I can put, choose existing photo, and then I can go ahead and choose that picture that I took. And on top of that, there's a little um, 
thing here where I can put the zones in. So I put zone four right there. This was zone six right there. And I believe, let me check the sky again. The sky was like eight and a third ish. 13, three. Yeah, so the zone, it was a little above zone eight, but I'll just put zone eight in there in the white part of the sky, or maybe the, yeah, right there. And then I can apply. So now I, in the field, I know, okay, this is, these are the zones that I placed. I'm going to give it normal development. And what's really cool, so this is the part that I didn't realize that you could do this and it would actually work with good notes. And this is where I was looking into like building my own app and I was, it, I was getting in really deep and then I'm like, well, there's gotta be a way to, to make these work together. So I can export this as a PDF, uh, let me see, as a PDF document. <clears throat> and like I said, this is the first time I'm actually doing this in the field. I've kind of like done these separately. But now if I go over, and I'm sure you could do this with other apps too, but if you go, let me see, open in GoodNotes. Field darkroom notes, so import to current document. And now it goes right into my field darkroom note logbook. So now I have the, the actual picture with where I placed the zones, exactly how it was shot, and then I can go right into my darker notes next to it. So it all stays in one spot. And so it's really, really cool. I'm really excited about it. Um, so those are the three apps that I've been using. Reciprocity Timer, uh, the Viewfinder app. Um, I also use the, the actual physical Viewfinder, but the Viewfinder app works, it seems to be pretty good. Um, and good notes and so that's what I've been doing so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these hopefully hopefully after all that I, I, I got a picture <laughs> so this is one of the first stops we made and we're gonna head on down the Mississippi and see what else we can find. Hopefully I'll find some other cool things to take pictures of. Uh, but this was pretty neat. I'd been to this monument a long time ago and always wanted to make it back here. And the fact that I have my large format camera makes it a little bit more special. So hopefully we got some cool pictures. I've always loved the bluffs and stuff down here. It's just really cool to be on the Mississippi. So we're gonna travel down a little bit further and just keep on going. So I'm at the arch. The arch. Man, this thing's big. So I'm gonna try and I've got some Tri-X and HP5. I got my Linhoff. I'm gonna shoot a little large format around here. And I'm gonna try and use those apps I was talking about again to keep track of everything I was doing. I switched out film, my film holders and put them in boxes and labeled that in the Reciprocity app as well. One thing I did notice with that Reciprocity app is the zone placements on the, the pictures, it didn't save them in the app. So I don't know if there's a setting in there or if it's a glitch in the app, but I was a little, little bummed about that because I had to go back in and re-export and I was taking some more notes on the actual pictures that I took and I had to replace the zones from memory because it didn't save those. So I was a little bummed about that, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep working through this workflow, um, this whole trip and just you know kind of see what happens. But yeah, I'm gonna see what kind of pictures I can get of this this big arch. The widest I have is a 90 millimeter. And so this thing's huge and when you're up to it, like I don't have anything wide enough when I'm close up to get to it. So I'm gonna try and do some more close ups and then I'm gonna walk around and see, kind of see what I can get.
I took the took the train across the Eden Eden something bridge. I can't remember quite the name of it. Um, this is the so this is the other side of the Mississippi. But this bridge looks pretty cool. It's pretty old. I'm gonna go see if I can get any good angles on it. Look at these pylons, man. Holy crap. This stuff's gnarly. I'm just gonna keep moving along. See if I can find anything else. So I've been told that the, the Mississippi here is at kind of an all-time record low. Um, I can hear the train in back of me. That's the train I took over here. But it is, it does seem really low. If I look across, uh, probably hard to see on this wide angle, but you can see the, the, it's almost like a huge sand beach and I don't think that's usually there. But I'm gonna try and get on the other side of this bridge and see how it looks. And just for the record, it's a little sketchy getting back here, so I wouldn't recommend it. But it's a pretty cool view. Hopefully I can get a picture off before someone kicks me out. part about all this is that you never really know what you got until you develop the film and, and see how it prints but I got a good feeling about those I'm gonna try and get a couple just safe pictures you know kind of kind of like this of the bridge and then I think I'm gonna get out of this no man's land and go back take the train back over it's pretty cool because I get more I get more conversations when I'm shooting with my Hasselblad or my Linhoff. And my go-to right now is to tell people that, yeah, large format, what a pain in the ass. And it really is, but I have a love-hate relationship with it because I love printing from large format negatives. So when I'm out here, like the whole time, it's it's all basically just to be in the darkroom. Because I don't, I don't, well, I probably will scan these just because, but I, Rarely do I scan my large format negative. It's just something I don't do. I, I tend to just save them for printing in the darkroom. So, well, I gotta get on this train. All right, I was able to make it back and develop most of that film, and I got in and did a few test prints. Um, this was inside the train station in St. Louis, so this was a print that I, I really liked. And I was working on this, and I put everything from printing in the notes in my logbook. So I wanted to show you what that looks like um, from start all the way not quite finished, I just haven't had enough time to finish it, but close to finish with notes in the dark rooms. Okay, this is the Good Notes app here, and you can see that I have the Reciprocity Failure app notes imported into here, and within the Reciprocity Failure notes, I have the image I took with the Viewfinder app when I was visualizing how I wanted to set up my camera and how I wanted the shot to look. You can see where I placed the zones, um, four, you know, 10, the one caveat with the Reciprocity Timer app is that a lot of times I'll end up having zones fall on, or, or sorry, I'll ha end up having highlights fall on like zone 12, zone 14, and even higher. In that app, it only goes from zero to 10. 
So I have to manually, once I'm here, you know, either remember or place, and then I have to write in what those areas fell on. So I wish, I wish on that zone placement, it went up to at least maybe 16, 14. Um, it, would, it would be very helpful. But this is just a workaround that I found, so I, I come in and just place it here. But you can see, um, I didn't put the camera in, but I, I you know, wrote in Linhoff. It shows what uh, lens I used, it shows the film I used, the exposure, f-stop, my development, the filter I had on. But anyway, this is what the notes look like going into this. And then when I was taking it, because I couldn't place I could only go up to zone 10, I couldn't place these highlights. I just made a note, Sky was at zone 12, and kind of you know remembered that, and then when I imported it, put it in there. Then I have the development I used. I used a two bath compensating development because the, I was trying to get shadow detail in the structure, and the sky outside was very, very bright. So I have the film development, notes on that, and then I have my actual test print log. And I put that right next to it so everything is in place. I can put references on the top so I can go find the negative if I want to. I can add additional sheets here um, as I go. So this is really, really um, powerful. It's just great to have all the notes in one spot. I'm a very unorganized person by nature and it takes a lot of effort for me to get organized. I think this has a lot of potential because for me, when I'm out shooting large format, you, it just seems like you have so much stuff. You've got a loop, you've got you know film holders you otherwise wouldn't have, you have, you have a darkroom cloth, possibly, external light meter, just a lot of stuff. And I would be out there taking notes and I don't remember how many times, like I would have my notebook and I couldn't find my pencil because you're juggling all this stuff. So either I needed a better system in place for finding my pencil or I needed a system in place for something that, hey, let's bring less stuff, the notebook, and you always have your phone on you anywhere and kind of work that into the workflow. And I'm always kind of intrigued by like digital things helping analog for some reason. It, I mean, I don't know, it just, it just seems intriguing to me. That's pretty much it. I mean, that and I can't sketch for crap. So I would be out there trying to draw these pictures of what I was taking a picture of, the place of the zones on and do all this stuff. and. I mean, it, it looked like like two-year-old art, and I'm like, I can't make heads or tails of this. I would get back and not really know what, what happened. So being able to actually have the picture and place the zones exactly where you want to, I think it's very beneficial. But I'm gonna keep working with it and see if I can refine everything and make this better. But does anybody out there have anything like this that they're using? or any tips or ideas on this workflow? I would really love to hear it in the comments below, because like I said, this is pretty, you know, Putting this all together is really new to me and I want to make it something that you know anybody could use and would really get benefit from. But I definitely wanted to, to share this with you. I thought you know some of you out there might find this of interest. And like I said, I want feedback. I want to know like, hey, does this, does this look like a good idea or what are you doing? Also wanted to let you guys know I am in the works of putting together a few different workshops. And in doing so, I have a newsletter um, sign up. You can, you can sign up for the newsletter below. And I want to have a way to let you guys know what's going on with these workshops and different things I have going on, as well as get input from you guys to what would be beneficial and what you would wanna see in an actual workshop. So I do have a few things in place and I'm very excited for that. And for signing up for the newsletter, I put together a, a darkroom formula book of some of my most used darkroom recipes. So some developers, toners, and just some other miscellaneous formula that I use like all the time and find very invaluable. So I put that together so you'll get that if you sign up for the newsletter as a, as a freebie, as well as this um, print log worksheet I just put together to make my notes in GoodNotes look much better. It's got all the, all the things you would need on there to actually you know, in your darkroom print log. So it's just a darkroom print log sheet, but I'm throwing that in there as well. But anyway, I just wanna wait a way to communicate with you guys better. And like I said, let you know what's going on with the workshops and the different things I have going on. I'll also let y'all know when I'm posting new YouTube videos. And mostly I want a lot of input and feedback from um, the actual darkroom community and just to, just to get more cool stuff out there for everybody. So that's gonna do it for this video. Like I said, I hope you found this workflow interesting and leave your comments below. Let me know what you think and we will see you in the next video.